welcome to Virology Research Services, where we decode science and provide innovative solutions. Have you ever wondered how scientists measure the amount of infectious virus particles in a sample? In virology, one of the most reliable and established methods is the plaque assay. This technique not only quantifies viruses, but specifically measures those that are infectious. The plaque assay involves adding viruses to a layer of susceptible cells and observing how they infect and kill these cells. By applying a semi-solid overlay, we limit the spread of the virus to neighboring cells. This containment causes each infectious particle to produce a localized zone of infected cells called a plaque. Over time, the plaques grow large enough to be seen without a microscope. This method works only with viruses that cause visible damage to cells. For example, this plate shows plaques formed by herpes virus 1 on a monolayer of Vero cells. In this image, the cells are stained with crystal violet, making it easy to see the plaques where the virus has destroyed the cells. But let's go through the steps of performing a plaque assay. First, we need to grow the cells until they form a confluent monolayer of susceptible cells. This means cultivating the cells so that they uniformly cover the entire growth surface, forming a cohesive sheet that's susceptible to the virus we're studying. Next, the virus sample is diluted serially to create a range of concentrations. Aliquots from each dilution are added to the cell cultures. The goal is to find the optimal dilution where individual plaques can be clearly identified. This step is crucial because too many viruses will overwhelm the cells, while too few may not form visible plaques at all. After a brief incubation period, typically at least one hour to allow the viruses to attach to the cells, the excess virus is washed off. Then, a semi-solid layer like agarose or methyl cellulose is applied to restrict virus movement. This semi-solid overlay is key. It limits virus movement so new viruses can only infect the neighboring cells. If the virus causes cell death, it leaves behind clear zones in the monolayer called plaques. The plate is then incubated for a few days to allow plaques to form. Each plaque represents the progeny of a single infectious virus particle. Once plaques are large enough to be visible, the cells are fixed with chemicals like formaldehyde to preserve the structures and stained with crystal violet. The result? A stunning contrast where healthy cells appear purple, while the plaques where cells have been destroyed stay clear. Now we have everything we need to calculate the virus concentration in the original sample. First, we need to choose a dilution where the plaques are easy to count, not so crowded that they can't be accurately counted, or so few that the results become unreliable due to insufficient data. It's also important to work with replicates, counting plaques on all of them, and calculating the average for more accurate results. In this case, at a dilution of 10 to the minus 5, we can count 60 plaques. Once we have this count, we apply the dilution factor and the volume of the virus added using this formula. Like that, we obtain the virus concentration in the original sample expressed as plaque-forming units per milliliter. The plaque assay measures infectious units, particles capable of infecting cells and forming plaques. While particle infectious units per milliliter is often equated to infectious units per milliliter, it's important to note that not every infectious particle will form a plaque due to various factors influencing infectivity. For viruses that don't form plaques, the focus-forming assay is an alternative. This method uses virus-specific antibodies to detect clusters of infected cells, known as foci. By tagging antibodies with fluorescent markers or enzymes, we can visualize and count these foci to determine viral titers in focus-forming units per milliliter. Even after more than a century, the plaque assay is still one of the most accurate methods for measuring infectious viruses. This shows the ingenuity of early scientists and the lasting importance of basic techniques in science.
We hope you found this video helpful, and as always, best of luck at the bench.